we present Kenneth Williams, Derek Nimmo, Clement Freud and Geraldine Jones in just a minute. And as the minute waltz fades away, here to tell you about it is our chairman, Nicholas Parsons. Thank you very much indeed. Hello, welcome once again to Just a Minute. And once again, we have the four most experienced exponents of the game who are going to try and speak for just a minute on some unlikely subject that I will give them without hesitation, without repetition, and without deviating from the subject in any way at all. And if one of the others thinks they're guilty of one of these crimes, they may challenge them by pressing the buzzer which they hold in their hands. If I uphold their challenge, they will gain a point and take over the subject. And if I don't uphold their challenge, the person speaking gains a point and continues with the subject. Clement Freud, will you begin this particular round? The subject is interviewing a secretary. Can you talk for just a minute on that subject, starting now? Before you can interview a secretary, you have to put an advertisement into a paper in which you say Clement Freud is looking for a non-smoking, non-clock-watching secretary who will work and drive cars and be generally nice about the house. And you get an awful lot of answers, mostly from people who smoke and don't drive cars, who say, I'm sure if you employ me, I could get to become all you want. You cross all those, <laughs> you delete all those from your list, and you send to the others the sort uh, Derek Nimmo, you pressed your buzzer, you challenged. Why? Hesitation. Hesitation, I perfectly agree. And as uh, Derek Nimmo... Well, you've Nimmo got to hesitate a bit before you can interview a secretary. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I quite agree, Clement, but you cannot hesitate when you're playing this game. Derek Nimmo wins a point. He takes over the subject for the next 25 seconds, if he can, starting now. Do sit down in that swivel leather chair, Priscilla, while I proceed to interview I, I say. Uh, uh, Clement Freud, you've challenged. Why? Hesitation. Yes, there were two. <laughs> you very kindly overlooked the first one and the second one. You took him up with 20 seconds left. For interviewing a secretary, Clement, you begin now. Ideally, you want to make the job as unattractive as possible, because all jobs become pretty ropey when you get on. Uh, Geraldine Jones, you have challenged. Why? Um, deviation. Why? We haven't actually got to the interview yet. We're still on advertisements. No. No, I d it's a very clever try. It's one of those things that's very difficult to decide. <laughs> <laughs> that's because she has a large family from Liverpool. It is. <laughs> <laughs> the decision has been taken out of my hands by what Clement Freud claims is a large family from Liverpool, which is Geraldine's home, of course. So, Geraldine, you have a point, and so you take over the subject with 13 seconds left, starting now. My biggest problem when interviewing a secretary is that most of them are women, and, of course, this gives me a natural disadvantage because in the position of prospective employer, I appear to be militant and careerist and rather... Uh, uh, Derek Nemo, you have challenged why? Hesitation. There was a definite hesitation. You've been very clever getting in with only one second to go, Derek, with interviewing a secretary starting now. She draws very close to my table. <laughs> I should explain for anybody who doesn't know the game too well, whoever is speaking when the 60 seconds is up, and that's denoted by the whistle, gains an extra point. On this occasion, it was Derek Nimmo who, of course, has got the lead at the end of the first round. Clem oh, Kenneth Williams, will you begin the second round for us? <laughs> you haven't spoken yet, have you? No, no, I can't wait. <laughs> oh, good. What to write on holiday postcards? That is the subject, Kenneth. <laughs> 60 seconds of that, starting now. Most people, of course, generally deal with climate, where they are staying, what they think about the place, and things like wish you were sharing it with me. I do not do any of these things. I choose the postcard deliberately to write on the back. I recently chose one of two fearful-looking brigands hung with bullets all over them, great bandoleros of bullets, fierce-bearded rift tribesmen, and I put on the back, I was sent it to the chairman, actually, of a very large company in London. These two tried it on with me last night. <laughs> and I, thought, I thought that was a lot more interesting than rubbing yourself with oil and rubbing your belly in the hot sand of San Tropez. Clement Freud, you've challenged why? Repetition. Of what? Rubbing. Rubbing your belly in the hot sand? What better on holiday? It's lovely. <laughs> you what get out there doing it, I'll bet. <laughs> <laughs> what better on holiday, Kenneth? But in the game, you can't do it more than once. So oh, Clement it, Freud... It was repetition you got me on, was it? Yes, repetition, oh, yes. Right, too much, that. Too mm. much rubbing. <laughs> 
So, uh, uh, Clement Freud takes another point, and with 16 seconds left for what to write on holiday postcards, he begins now. Words are possibly the best things to write on a holiday postcard. <laughs> Often, these words with... Uh, Geraldine Jones, you've challenged. Hesitation. Yes, there was. Yes, I think he hesitated because he repeated the word words, yeah. mm. and he spotted it before anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> so there we are. There are eight and a half seconds left for you, Geraldine, with the subject starting now. I always find something to write on my holiday postcards. Um, Clement Freud, you've challenged. Why? Repetition, if you always find something. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, but I, I don't think that is entirely fair. No, I mean, she must... Uh, you're, you're just twisting words, I think, there, Clement. No, I'm with Geraldine Jones. She has another point. She has six seconds left, starting now. The messages are invariably very boring for the people you're sending the cards to, so I write to the postman and put as much... As Geraldine Jones is speaking then when the whistle went, she gains an extra point, and she has taken a lead of one at the end of the second round. Derek Nimmer, will you begin the third round? And the subject <coughs> is sad films. And you begin now. The first sad film was shown on the 14th of August, 1921, in a small cinema off Wardour Street. The Southern Armenian uh, Documentary Film Company, or Sad Films Inc., as they're known in America, produced the film to expose to the world at large the atrocities being committed upon the Armenian population by the Turks during the 1914-18 war, just soon afterwards. You know, these atrocities are not generally known. It's not generally realised until the sad uh, films... Geraldine Jones, you challenge why? Repetition. Of what? Generally known, generally known. Ah, now, now, I would have let you have atrocities. We had a repetition of atrocities, but generally known, you cannot just have little phrases like that. So I oh, think I that's a little bit unfair. Otherwise, you would have them for ands and nuts and buts and ifs. So, Derek, I'm still with you. 32 seconds left for sad films, starting now. The director of the film, Klaevich Naparovich, uh, wanted... Uh, Clement Freud, why do you chat? Repetition. Of what? Two bitches. <laughs> <laughs> If you've got to make up unlikely names, you'll really avoid that sort of thing. All record. right, I'll tell you what I do. There were two separate names, so they both ended in bitch. I will give you a bonus point, a one point for cleverness, Clement, and I leave the subject with Derek Nimmo, who continues for the next 27 seconds, starting now. I didn't see the film myself until 1958, and I remember sitting in the cinema seat crying. Geraldine, <laughs> you challenge. Hesitation. Hesitation, Geraldine. You have another point. It was emotion. I said crying. It was emotion. <laughs> it was an emotional hesitation. So Geraldine has a point. She has 23 seconds left, starting now. I always go to see sad films on my own because I invariably cry all the way through, and this means that my face becomes red and swollen and my eyes go bloodshot. It's only fun. Uh, Clement Roy, why have you challenged? Hesitation. No, there was no hesitation. No, no. She, was in, she was doing magnificently. Sounded to both of us. Yes, I, I definitely got a, a hint of hesitation, yes. I think. Just because you two sit the same side of the... Because I love him, that's right. <laughs> My friend is stuck by me through thick and thin. <laughs> At last it has come out. <laughs> yes. Geraldine, we are now back with you on the subject of sad films. You have gained another point. You have 13 seconds left, starting now. Sometimes I've been thrown out of the cinema during sad films. Derek Nimmo, why do you chant? Repetition of cinema. Oh, yes, we've had a lot of cinema. Mm. You're quite right, Ooh, yes. I, I haven't used the word once. Mm. You no, but it's been cinema that? has been used a great number of times oh, in indeed, this yes. uh, particular mm. round. Oh, yes, so, yes. Derek Nimmo, you have ten and a half seconds for sad films starting now. I sat there with tears streaming down my face. I'm terribly upset. Uh, Clement Kenneth Williams, why uh, do you repetition. say... Repetition. He said there's tears streaming down his face before. No, he didn't, actually, but Geraldine did. So it oh, well, that's repetition. Yeah, yes. that's what I meant. I meant that. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, it's very good of you to point that out. So, <laughs> Kenneth Williams, you've got your first point. <laughs> which, uh, thank you. Have I leapt into the league? <laughs> not quite, uh, not quite. But you have uh, seven and a half seconds for sad films starting now. Well, the sad films are known as weepies, and I've done a lot of them because I used to go to all those early Hollywood ones where the women all the time At the end of disadvantage because I've got a creaking chair. <laughs> I don't know if you're picking it up at all. I don't want you to think it's anything else. <laughs> Kenneth, are you still continuing talking about sad films? Oh, I was just explaining. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Because we've actually finished now. You've gained oh. two points. Right. We've got to the next round, and Geraldine Jones, at the end of that round, has a slight lead over Derek Nimmo, and Geraldine begins the next round, and the subject is Charles I. Would you try and talk for 60 seconds on that subject, Geraldine, starting now? Charles I was a very strange gentleman, because according to the most... 
Kenneth Williams, why do you challenge? Because it wasn't strange at all. It's deviation. He was the King of England. There's nothing strange about that. <laughs> You can still be King of England and be strange. In fact, I think if you study your history books, you'll find there's been some very strange kings on the English throne. Nonsense. He was born I to be the king. I disagree, Kenneth, that I'm the one who has to decide, so I'm going to stand by my decision. All right, then you've got to say exactly what, 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 what about him is strange. <laughs> If you're going to support no, that contention... I'm going to let Geraldine Jones say about what about him is strange. Geraldine. Oh, she'll take hours. <laughs> Fifty-six seconds will do, Geraldine, and you continue now. According to a portrait of him, he has three faces, which I think is strange. On the other... Kenneth Williams, why... This is deviation, too. Why? The portrait does not depict him with three faces. The portrait simply shows him as a Van Dyke, or the three, three sides of him, that's all. I mean, that doesn't show him with three faces. She's inferring that it's one head with three faces on one head. It's rubbish. It's deviation. <laughs> I'm going to put this to the audience. I'm not going to come <laughs> in the middle of this. <laughs> Do you agree with Kenneth Williams's challenge? And if you agree with it, will you please cheer? If you disagree, will you please boo? And will you all do it together now? <laughs> I don't know. You're messing up. <laughs> I'm going to decide the cheers had it. We're going to find out what you think about Charles I with an extra point and with 52 seconds left starting now. Charles I was the most remarkable king this country ever had and, of course, he has left us with the most appalling sense of guilt ever since because it was one of the occasions in this country when we all indulged in regicide, which is evil and wrong and should never have occurred if I'd been there. I'd have shouted out, Stop! Oh, I cry. Oh, this must not happen. What are you doing? Think, think. Let child, child, children shall cry out upon you, woe! Woe! Your woe came in at the right moment. Uh, Clement <laughs> Freud has challenged you. Why? Repetition. Clement? Of what? Think, think. Think, think, think. <laughs> and more things. And more well. right. also. Well, Clement Freud, will you take up Charles I for another 30 seconds, starting now? Charles I was a very ordinary king until he was executed in 1600. Uh, Derek Nemo, you challenged. Well, he's not ordinary. It's already been established. He's either strange <laughs> or extraordinary, but he certainly can't be ordinary. It was overruled. <laughs> it is not... So it's deviation. <laughs> <laughs> I must explain. I must explain to our listeners that that laughter was not caused by Derek Nimmo's challenge by the fact that Kenneth Williams had just taken off his shoes. <laughs> well, my feet swell. <laughs> Very bad for me. Well, apparently Charles I always has this effect on him. They go to his feet and not his head. But we don't think, Derek Nimmo, back to the subject that anything has been firmly established about Charles I in this particular round. So I'm still with Clement Freud, who has another point. He has 25 seconds left, starting now. Having succeeded, James I, you... Uh, Kenneth Williams, why do you challenge? Because you must make it clear that he wasn't just James I, you see, he's James VI of Scotland as well. He so was still say... James I of England. Oh, well, you're right, of course. Yes. He's very fair. He's very fair. <laughs> <laughs> he's fair. So Clement Freud has another point, and he has 23 seconds left for Charles I, starting now. He ruled England for 39 years before he was executed and lost his head at the Tower of London, which gave rise to a... So uh, Kenneth, you challenged again. Well, he didn't lose his head at the Tower of London at all. He was executed in Whitehall, outside the Inigo Jones Banqueting Hall. You're quite right, Kenneth yeah. <laughs> During Kenneth the banquet. Williams today showing a new side of his personality, the historian and also the steward. And the voyeur. <laughs> <laughs> And the man who works better without his shoes on. <laughs> Tell me, Kenneth, do you always drink to the king across the water when you raise your glass? Never. I've got no time for all that rubbish. Once the line was established, I believe we should stick to it. All right. Well, I let's don't believe to this in this line now, law. and you carry on with Charles I for 14 seconds, starting now. Well, he, one of the most gracious things, I think, that he said was on the scaffold when the bishop said, how do you feel, or something to that effect, <laughs> and he said, I go from a corrupt world to an incorruptible one where there will will be no more. <laughs> well, Kenneth Williams' knowledge of, uh, of history has brought him up with the others, and they're all now neck and neck. <laughs> Clement Freud, will you begin the next round? The subject is flat hunting, and please begin now. 
Essex is possibly the best county for doing this, but all you need is a terrain without hills or mountains, without undue depression, and a fair amount of game such as grouse, hare, buffalo, tigers, rabbit. Kenton is why you would challenge. Rabbit is an endless the list of animals. We're not the least interested in black Yes, animals. now I think we've got to establish one thing. If you go on, you can have a list of anything and call it repetition. But unless you actually repeat the word, I don't think within this game hmm. we're ever going to get anywhere. If we That's that true. Repetition. Well, you've got to have the rules. You've yes. got to have so, rules. You can't get on without them. That's quite true. So I'm not going to give any points for that. I'm going to ask Clement Freud to continue with 44 seconds left, starting now. Horses, cows, chickens, bantams, worms. Kenneth Williams, right? Deviates, it's all boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's got nothing to do with flat. I'm hunting, always it? boring. Nothing to do with flat. No. I think it's deviation, I'm, you see. I'm always boring. That's well, not deviation. <laughs> <laughs> in this game, it could be, but Kenneth Williams on this occasion has a point. He has uh, 37 seconds left, starting now. Well, of course, you've got to find your district, and having done that, you want to find the compatible. Uh, Derek Nimmer, why have you challenged? Repetition of find. Yes. Yes, good, it good, is true. Good. Well, very good point, I thought. It is a trivial. <laughs> trivial, it's trivial, trivial. I'll grant that. And the that, next trivial. trivial point, I'm not going to award no, a point no, to. quite right. So that's right. the last trivial person. I... <laughs> 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 that's the last trivial point I give to a trivial challenge. Derek Nimmo, 34 seconds, starting now. I look down the more popular newspapers, and there I see a desirable little residence to let. So I go round and knock at the door, and I say, Hello, what hell, how are you today? And they say, Do come in, Mr. Nimmo. And I say, How nice of you to know my name. And they said, You've got it written in front of you. And I said, How clever you to read. And so uh, now I go and I say, may I see the bath? I look around the bath. Absolutely beautiful, immaculate, lovely lavatory, lovely bath. Lo uh, Clement Freud. Three, Three baths. baths. Three what? Bathroom, bathroom, bath. Very well. All right, Clement yeah. Freud. Fifteen seconds Three. for bath. hunting. Bathroom. Lovely bath. bath. Lovely bathroom, lovely lavatory. You said, may I see the bath first of all? So that Look, makes we're three, not going to have any argument between us. <laughs> Clement Freud has 15 seconds left for flat hunting starting now. Many people spend an awful lot of time searching for accommodation, which is often advertised in shop windows, especially in the Knightsbridge and Bayswater districts, where the unfortunate. Uh, Janet Williams, why have you chance? Deviation. Why? Well, because he's obviously advertised in the Knightsbridge area, and he's got an interest That's in that area. nothing to do with it. Clement Freud has another point. He has oh. five seconds left for flat hunting starting now. Room to let, especially for two working women, is a popular phrase which you find... <laughs> <laughs> Well, at the end of that round, it's still neck and neck. Only one point separates all of them in different uh, degrees. Kenneth Williams, will you begin the next round? Bending people to your will. <laughs> you seem to like the thought of that subject, Kenneth, so can you talk on, for 60 seconds on it, starting now? The best way to do this is through affection. There are two ways, of course, to do it. One is to do it through fear. This is the way they accomplish it in the army and similar organisations. They make people do what they want because they frighten them. On the other hand, you can do it through affection, natural affection. <laughs> Clement Roy. It's the third affection. Well, yes, but natural affection is different to unnatural affection, isn't it? Could you fancy It's still a repetition of affection, yes. I'm oh, sorry to say. Because we were it worked up and everything. <laughs> we were enjoying it so much, mm. Kenneth. So there are 40 seconds left for you, Clement Freud, bending people to your will, starting now. Your will is one of the best people for bending people that I've ever come across. He was born in 43 High Street, South Wales, Suffolk, and his full name was actually Bill Cross. He bent people all over the eastern counties Derek of England. Derek you've challenged. Why? Repetition of bending. No, he said bent then, not bending. I'm so sorry. I That's all right. So all that happens is, I'm afraid, if you don't concentrate, Clement Freud has another point, and there are 26 seconds left, starting now. Throughout East Anglia, there are straight and honest people who have lost their shape entirely because of this villainous gentleman who has gone around inflicting his own particular... <laughs> 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 Hesitation after his own particular. Yes, he was. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was finding another way to bend his own particular. So, um, uh, Derek Nimmo, you have 14 seconds left for bending people to your will starting now. Every time I make a will, I go into my sister's office and I get 48 people all round the desk and I say. Uh, Kenneth Williams, why Deviation is now talking about making a will, we were talking about bending to the will. Bending people to your will. They're mm. just going to bend, if you'll give them a moment. 
I've got I'll... them in a circle round it, do you see? And they're all going to bend into your will? Bending people to your will. Oh, that's a very clever way, Derek Nimmo. So you have nine seconds left. Another point to you, starting now. This large group of people are foregathered. I say the word of command. One, two, three, down they go. I say, well, they're all on the ground, you see, looking at it. I go round. Well, at the end of that round, Derek Nimmo has taken a very decided lead over Clement Freud, who is leading Geraldine Jones and Kenneth Williams, who are in third place. Geraldine Jones, will you begin the next round? Equal pay for women, and will you begin now? The great myth about equal pay for women is that women do equal work. It is absolutely impossible for a woman to do any job in precisely the same way as a man, and therefore the whole myth of how much she should be paid should be exploded here and now. In fact, of course, women should be paid a great deal more for anything they do, in especially for those jobs that only they do. And to try and drag their salaries down to those which men have suffered for centuries is folly and I think very retrogressive and reactionary. When I get a job which hasn't yet happened to me, I don't expect to be paid as little as men. I expect to be paid far, far more. And I hope... Kenneth Williams... Far, well, far. <laughs> Kenneth Williams, you have a point, and you have 24 seconds for equal pay for women starting now. This is a ludicrous idea. Everyone knows that the men are the prime movers of this world, all the great discoveries, Copernicus, Galileo, men, all of them. Women are a load of Derek rubbish. Nimmo, no! <laughs> He's talking about men, not women, isn't he? Deviation, is it? No. If you'd had him for repetition of men, I would have agreed. You've got, in order to talk equal talking pay about for women... All the great... We have already had a comparison with the pay of men, so I Precisely. think I must Thank keep you. with Kenneth Williams. Oh, a wise chairman, oh, wise, benevolent, <laughs> wise man. Yes. Twelve seconds for equal pay for women starting now. It is a ludicrous idea that they should have equal pay because they do not and cannot by their very nature put in the hours that men put in. Uh, Clement mm. Freud, why do you challenge? Repetition. Of what? Men. All right. There are three seconds left. Equal pay for women, Clement Freud, starting now. This is the most admirable thing, and I'm absolutely entirely... <laughs> well, at the end of that round, uh, Clement Freud Has is left in second lead. place, oh. just in front of Geraldine Jones and Kenneth Williams, who are equal in third place, and Derek Nimmo is equal. still in the lead. Kenneth Williams, will you begin the next round? Things to say to people on first acquaintance. Can you try and talk on that subject for 60 seconds, starting now? Well, they usually say things like, what sort of work are you in, or what sort of things do you do? And I invariably launch into a brief encapsulated story of my career since it began. I generally say, well, you know, I first decided I would be a draftsman. I felt that was my natural bent. I felt it was my fault. <laughs> and then I say, no, I changed my mind because I realised that art was calling me. The muse had lit upon my shoulder. And so I decided to, to go into... I, I hesitate. <laughs> <laughs> Clement Freud, you challenged. Hesitation. Hesitation, yes, because Kenneth Williams also told you. And there are another point to you. 22 seconds there. Things to say to people on first acquaintance starting now. I never get people's names when I first meet them, so I tend to say to them, I didn't quite catch what you were called. And they say, my name is... Uh, Derek Nimmer, why do you chat? Repetition of names. Derek Nimmer, you have another point. Most but people th have two names. I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid you can't get out of it that way, mm. uh, Clement. 13 seconds left. Things to say to people on first acquaintance, Derek, starting now. What I say is, have you interviewed a secretary? Or what do you write on holiday postcards? Do you like sad films? What about Charles I? Do you like making a speech? What about equal pay for women? Do you like flat hunting? Uh, Clement, why have you challenged? Hesitation. No, he was in full flood there. <laughs> He was trying to search for the next subject, I think. There's one second left for you, Derek Nemo. Things to say to people on first acquaintance, starting now. What old fruit how are you? <laughs> well, that, I'm afraid, is all we have time for in this particular game of just oh, a minute. Oh, what a shame. I really didn't get much out at all. No, but you did quite well. <laughs> and in spite of that last challenge, Derek Nemo would still have been the winner. By a clear four or five points, he is undoubtedly this week's winner. <laughs> Come 
Simon Floyd was second, and Geraldine Jones and Kenneth Williams were equal in third place, a little way behind Clement. Well, that's all that we have time for, as I said before. We hope you've enjoyed this particular game of Just a Minute. From all of us here, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> The chairman of Just a Minute was Nicholas Parsons. The programme was devised by Ian Messiter and produced by David Hatch.